Hello friends, my name is Pastor Bruce and I'm your pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so glad you've tuned into this week's kids worship video. Are you ready to learn together? Do you like to be in the kitchen? Maybe you love helping someone in your family make cookies or taste testing the spaghetti sauce. I love to cook and something that helps me when I'm cooking is to have a plan or a recipe to follow out of my cookbook. Just like having a plan in the kitchen helps me make a meal to enjoy, the stories of the Old Testament prophets are like a cookbook that helped people prepare for the Savior that God would send one day in Jesus. This month, we are following a step-by-step -step recipe to prepare for the loving relationship with God. Today is step one, trust God. We're going to begin by reading our Bible verses for today. Out of the two different books of the Bible we'll be looking at today, our first scripture is from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And our second scripture is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. You can listen to me while I read, or you can follow along with your own Bible. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to go get your Bible. Ready? Let's read it together. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 8 through 16 says, A message came to Elijah from the Lord. He said, Go right away to Zarephath in the region of Sidon. Stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So Elijah went to Zarephath. He came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called out to her. He asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar? I need a drink. She went to get the water. Then he called out to her, Please bring me a piece of bread, too. I don't have any bread, she replied. And that's just as sure as the Lord your God is alive. All I have is a small amount of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home. I'll make one last meal for myself and my son. We'll eat it, and after it we'll die. Eliza said to her, don't be afraid. Go home. Do what you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me. Make it out of what you have. Bring it to me. Then make some for yourself and your son. The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, The jar of flour will not be used up. The jug always ha will always have oil in it. You will have flour and oil until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did what Elijah had told her to do. So Elijah had food every day. There was also food for the woman and her family. The jar of flour wasn't used up. The jug always had oil in it. That's what the Lord had said would happen. He had spoken that message through Elijah. Now let's turn to the Gospel of Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. As he taught, he said, Watch out for the teachers of the law, they like to walk around in long robes. They like to be greeted with respect in the market. They love to have the most important seats in the synagogues. They also love to have the places of honor at dinners. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. God will punish these men very much. Jesus sat down across the place where people put their temple offerings. He watched the crowd putting their money into the offering boxes. Many rich people threw large amounts into them. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. They were worth only a few pennies. Jesus asked his disciples to come to him. He said, what I'm about to tell you is true. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because they are rich, but she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Now, we're going to learn more about trusting God from our friends on today's episode of Grow TV. If you are one of our preschool friends, you can have someone help you jump ahead to today's episode of Kaylee's World, or just keep watching. Carl?
Oh, what's up, kids? Welcome to Ghoul TV! Hosted by Carl! Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Ghoul TV! Yo, what's up? Uh, let me call Carl real quick. I want to see what he's up to. Hello? Okay, Carl, where are you at, man? I'm here at Grow TV. Aren't you, like, supposed to be, like, starting a cooking show today? Oh, I, I thought you were doing that. <laughs> what? I heard you talking to Jade about it last week. Like, you said that you would cook and, like, you would help out. So I decided to go on vacation. You gotta be kidding me. This is gonna be awful. Oh, man. Well, that attitude it will be. Don't worry, Cooper. You're my cousin, so you'll do great. Anyways, I gotta go. Also, uh, goodbye. Well, hello, all my foodie friends. And thank you so much for joining my new cooking show that I have, apparently. That's right, a new cooking show. I was thinking to myself what I should name this cooking show, and I thought, uh, well, my name's Cooper, and I'm cooking. So we're gonna call it Cooking with Cooper. <laughs> now, we didn't create this cooking show for any old reason, no siree. We actually have like a really big event happening like at the end of the month. It's gonna be like a big party with like all of my favorite people there. And I'm so excited. Now, you guys know my friend Jada, right? <laughs> well, recently she came up to me and Carl and she asked us if we knew how to look. <laughs> And of course I said, yeah, I've got like 20-20 vision, dude. <laughs> but apparently she did not mean look. She meant to ask me if I can cook. <laughs> I misheard her, that's my bad. So my dude Carl and I said yes, and I would help him out, but it looks like Carl isn't showing up. So I'm cooking solo today. And now I only have a few weeks to learn how to cook, so I figured we'd start a cooking show. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be awesome. Or should I say, excellent. <laughs> Get it? Cause like, eggs? <laughs> okay. Today we will be preparing an absolute wonderful dish that all of us love very much in our lives. And that is, a drum roll please. A cake! <laughs> yes! Today you may not actually see a cake box instruction thing here because we don't listen to instructions or recipes or anything like that. We listen to the recipe of our hearts, my dudes, okay? All right? So first, you add the right amount of sugar. <laughs> Sick. That seems like enough. <laughs> Maybe a tad bit more, my dude. So the next- Whoa, 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 hold up. Wait a minute. Is my cake talking to me? Um. No. Cake? Are you there? Cooper, this is Jada. Jada, you've been turned into a cake? I'll help you. How do you, how do, how do I help? No, Cooper, it's me, Jada, look. Oh, goodness, there you are. Funny story, Jada. I thought you were a cake, <laughs> but you're not. Uh, nope, not today. Anyway, so what are you up to, Cooper? Are you cooking? Oh, excuse me one moment, Jada. Hey, kids, remember, Jada thinks I can cook. <laughs> so let's make sure she doesn't know that I can't <laughs> because that would be bad news for me, dude. <laughs> okay, so let's keep it on the DL, the down low, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, hey, Jada. <laughs> you know me, cooking is like breathing for me. I can't stop. It just comes natural. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. I can't wait for you to cook all that wonderful food at the party at the end of the month. Yup, me too. <laughs> oh, and by the way, did I hear that you don't listen to the recipes that come with the food? Oh yeah, following recipes is a lot like gravity to me. <laughs> I don't believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? If gravity was a thing, could I do this? <laughs> Um, that only happens because of gravity. That's not important. Uh, that's not the point. Cooper, you know why recipes are there, right? To distract you? 
No, they're there to help you, help you understand everything you need to do in order to make the food the proper way. Sounds like you just made that up, Jada. I can assure you I didn't, but I do actually have something for you. If it's a Komodo dragon, I'm gonna be really upset. Nope, not this time. It's actually a recipe. A recipe? I just told you how I feel about those. I know, but this recipe isn't just any old recipe. This is the super duper recipe for all things good. Um, that sounds amazing. Where is it? Look under your counter. Oh, there it is. What is this for? It's a recipe for how to grow your relationship with God. Now there are four steps in this recipe and each comes with a story. And by the end of the month, we will have learned all four steps of how we can know God and love God more. Okay, that sounds great. The first step says trust. Trust, um, is that a, uh, is that that? Is that, is this a trust? You can't really measure out trust like that, silly. But if we did have a supply of trust, the recipe would say put all of it into God. Well, isn't that kind of obvious, Jada? Well, not always. I mean, even Jesus' disciples had trouble fully trusting him at times. But when I think of people who trusted God, I always think of the story in 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings, 1 Kings, that's like the book with all the kings, right? You know what? It is, but the story from chapter 17 centers around the prophet Elijah. Elijah was told by God that it wouldn't rain for a few years. So that meant food wasn't being cooked all the time like at your place, Cooper. Yeah, like so much food gets cooked at my place. Like it's like crazy. <laughs> well, he was told by God to go to a new town where he would find a woman and that woman would give him food. Really? I thought because there wasn't like any rain, there'd be like, it'd be like hard to find food. <laughs> it was, but Elijah found the woman God had told him about and Elijah asked for a piece of bread. What did the lady say? Well, she had no bread, only a jar with a little flour and a jug with a tiny bit of oil. She was so low on food that she was fully expected that her and her son wouldn't last much longer without getting really sick. Oh, that's awful. Now, why would God send Elijah to the people to get food if they didn't even have enough for themselves? Well, this is where the trust comes in. Elijah told the woman to go home and make enough bread for not only him, but herself and her son as well. He told her that God would not allow the flour or oil to run out. Really? What did the lady do? She trusted Elijah and more importantly, trusted that God was telling the truth. She went back and made the bread. The flour never ran out and the oil never dried up. It was truly a miracle and the lady and her son were so happy they trusted God. Whoa, I can't believe I forgot about this story. That's like incredible. <laughs> I wish I could see a miracle like that happen. Well, Cooper, I think you will. As long as you- Wrestle Komodo dragon, I knew it. <laughs> what? No, all you have to do is follow the first step in the super duper recipe book. Oh yeah, step one, trust God. Is it really that simple? Of course, following and listening to God may not always be easy, but we must remember if we trust in God, we will be taken care of. Hey there, everybody. Our big idea is step one, trust God. So on the count of three, I want all of us to say it out loud. Are you ready? One, two, three. Step one, trust God. Good job, everybody. That is a super important step. So Cooper, how does your cake turn out? Well, this is what I was going for. And this is mine. <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Looks pretty appetizing. <laughs> Hope you like eggshells. <laughs> what? What is that? This? <laughs> oh, it's a cake, my dude. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I mean, if you ask me, I think it turned out pretty good. <laughs> that thing just made a noise? Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. Let's keep learning about our big idea, 
with this week's episode of Kaylee's World. If you are one of our friends in elementary school, you can jump ahead to today's discussion. Hey friends, I am so excited today. Today we are in my kitchen. Have you ever cooked anything in the kitchen with your family before? I love it here. I'm usually not allowed in here by myself because there are lots of dangerous things, like sharp knives in the stove that gets really hot. But my grandma is with me, and she's going to show me how to make a delicious fruit salad. Hmm, what is a fruit salad? I don't really know. I wonder if it's green stuff that my parents eat along with bananas. We will find out together, though. By the way, what is your favorite fruit? Can you shout it out? Take a look at all the fruits on the counter here. I know what this is, and this is, and even this. I have no idea what this one is. I think it's a kiwi. Can you say kiwi? That sounds so funny to say. I really hope my grandma doesn't use this one though. Hmm, that looks really interesting. Well, here she comes. Let's listen to today's Bible story. And when we come back, I'll show you the most delicious fruit salad ever. Let's hope it tastes yummy. It's time for today's Bible story. It comes from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. Elijah was a prophet of God. That means that God spoke to Elijah, and Elijah would share what God said to him with other people. The problem was that sometimes people didn't want to hear it, especially people who were in power like kings and queens. To get away from these angry rulers, Elijah would have to run for his life and hide. One time when this happened, Elijah was led by God to hide beside a brook. A brook is a small stream. Elijah stayed there for a while and God gave him water and food while he was hiding from the angry rulers. But then the brook dried up, so Elijah had to move on. Then God led him to another place, the home of a widow who had one son. She was out collecting firewood when Elijah saw her and asked her for a drink. She started to go get a drink for the visitor when Elijah also asked for something to eat. The widow told Elijah that she only had enough food for one last meal for her and her son. She was collecting firewood to make that meal and then she was sure to die. Of all the places God would lead Elijah, God led him here to a woman and her child in great need. Elijah knew God wanted to take care of her and her son, but she would have to trust God first. Elijah told the woman to make him something to eat with what she had left, even though it looked like she would have no food left at all. Elijah told her not to worry. She wasn't going to run out of food. So that's what she did. She made Elijah something to eat, and it happened just as Elijah had said. She never ran out of food for her and her son until the time when they weren't in need anymore. This story helps us remember that God is always watching over us. That's why before we do anything else, we need to, step one, trust God. That Bible story was awesome! It kind of made me think about how a cook prepares a delicious dish. The first step in cooking is having the right ingredients. What ingredients did I need for my fruit salad? Once I had all my ingredients, everything else was super easy. We sometimes have problems. The woman in our story didn't have enough food. But before doing anything else, she needed to do one thing first. She needed to trust God. When she trusted God, everything turned out okay. That's why today's 
big idea is Step one is to trust God Say it with me Step one, trust, trust God. God So here is what we made But she used kiwi Kale, are you enjoying the fruit salad, dear? I haven't tried yet, Grandma I'm kind of scared of the kiwi. It's delicious. Well, you should try it. Okay. Hmm. It's not that bad. It's actually really, really good. Wow! My grandma really knew what she was doing. <laughs> wow! Friends, today was fun, and with grandma's help, I made the most delicious fruit salad ever! And now, I can say I even tried kiwi! <laughs> Gotta run now and share some with my parents! Yay! Bye for now! Now I want you to talk with someone else in your house about these questions. You can pause the video while you talk, but be sure to come back so that we can pray together and practice this week's memory verse. Our first question this week is, what food did Elijah ask the woman for? Our second question is, what are some things in your life you can trust God with right now? Go ahead and pause the video while you discuss. I'll wait for you. It's been so much fun learning with you about how we can trust God. Let's take time now to pray together. When we pray, let's put our hands together, close our eyes, and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for preparing good works in advance for us to do. Help us to trust you above anything else. We don't want to miss an opportunity to serve you. Amen. Before I go today, let's practice this month's memory verse together from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Let's say it together. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared us in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2 verse 10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you, friend, for spending time with me today. We can't wait to see you next week as we learn about step two in our recipe, talking to God. Have a blessed week, friends. Bye.